Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from the Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida. As a globetrotting aviation journalist, I've flown literally thousands of airplanes. I have so many type ratings that I can't even get them on a single card. And a few years ago, I was awarded the Collier Trophy for total awesomeness. Now all of those things are bald-faced lies, but what isn't a lie is that I've never flown one of those. That's an autogyro made by a German company of the same name. Now as a C- minus physics student, I can sort of explain how they work, but not really. We're going to talk to somebody who can definitely explain how they work. The gyro, it's not new. It, uh, it's, you know, it was invented or discovered in uh, 1923 and developed uh, up until about the mid-30s. And that's where you know, the helicopter kind of came into being and the development of the gyro basically stopped. Uh, in Europe, there's been a new renaissance for that. So it is now continuing to develop and evolve into a, a modern day you know, flying machine. Uh, the gyro is actually, uh, it's almost too simple to, you know, for most people, it's, it's actually a very simple mechanism and uh, people try to overthink it a little bit. Uh, just think of the rotor as a wing and it basically flies like a conventional uh, fixed wing aircraft other than that. There are some differences, but, uh, you know, for the most part, think of it as a um, fixed wing aircraft. The rotor, um, like a windmill, it, uh, it operates off the, the wind's energy. So as the wind blows up through the bottom of the rotor, uh, you, you get that energy and it forms a wing. In the old days, they started the rotor with hand, in their hand and, and took a, a takeoff run. Now we've shortened that takeoff run significantly with the addition of a motor operated uh, pre-rotator. The pre-rotator comes off of the uh, Rotax engine it is a uh, clutch, a uh, pressure plate clutch, just like in a, a conventional car, so to speak, that uh, goes through a transmission and up to the rotor. It disconnects um, like a, uh, a, a Bendix on a car starter. It's just centrifugal, and uh, when the energy comes off of that uh, rotator shaft, the Bendix uh, drops down out of the ring gear. It has uh, conventional rudder controls for y'all. It has, uh, does not have ailerons, but it has cyclic control to control roll and pitch. And of course, throttle and, and wheel brakes. It's, uh, it's very easy to, or we'll say, uh, for fixed wing pilots to transition to a gyro. In a gyro, taxi out to the runway is done compactly with the rotor locked in the fore and aft position. Once the Rotax is warmed up, the rotor is ready for spin up. Okay, so I have released the, um, the rotor brake, and I'm going to start to engage the pre-rotator now as, I, as we kind of taxi out here. And I see the rotor RPM coming up already almost 200. Yep, when we get up to 200, I'm going to bring the stick all the way back. It's going to come into your lap. Okay. And then we'll do our takeoff run. What effect does rotor speed have on the takeoff roll, any? Um, yeah, the faster I can get it spinning, the sooner we're, uh, we're in the air. Because you're just, you just have that much more lift. Right. You know, we come up off the ground probably close to 300 RPM, but really, for us flying, we're probably 360. And we're continuing to build rotor speed even on the climb out. Gaining energy in the gyro, it takes a while, you know, to build up that energy. We can, we can dissipate energy pretty quick. Speaking of energy, flying an autogyro is all about controlling it. Control, roll, yaw, and pitch are intuitive with stick and pedal input. However, there's no adverse yaw, so although a turn is banked by tilting the rotor slightly, the rudder merely keeps the nose aligned. It doesn't counter drag-induced yaw. Control forces are heavier than you'd expect in a light sport airplane because you're moving a 27-foot rotor disc without power assist. But the required control movement is quite small, as it is in a helicopter. Note how small the stick movement is in the video. Visibility, even from the back of the aircraft, is terrific. 
The rotor doesn't impede it from above, and there's no wing to block it from below. And unlike a helicopter, with no collective or torque to manage, the Otter Gyro can actually be flown hands-off. Take your hands off the stick. And so you've got uh, all that stability because you have no torque, correct? Right, and we're trimmed out. So it is, uh, and one of the differences is, you know, it's not quite labor intensive like a helicopter. So that is a plus for, uh, for anybody that has to do, you know, like law enforcement that has to do a job and concentration on flying the airplane is always number one, but we can kind of take a little bit of that workload off. The approach is flown at 50 to 55 knots indicated and the sight picture is steeper than it looks in a typical airplane. During the round out to landing, the speed dissipates rapidly just as it would in a helicopter auto rotation. The rollout is short, under 100 feet according to the POH, but it could be a lot shorter with a headwind and a skilled pilot. Okay, so I may have lied a little bit about that Collier Trophy thing, but at least I can honestly say I'm no longer an auto gyro virgin. Now for the small print. These auto gyros do not qualify for light sport status under the USA light sport rule. They're sold here as experimental amateur built at prices ranging between about 50000 for an open cockpit version to a little over 100000 for a side-by-side -side closed cockpit version. You can, however, fly them under the sport pilot rule because they meet the weight restriction. You can find out more on Bob Snyder's website at autogyrousa.com. For Ab Web, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.